Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. So what we're gonna do today is something that I saw on YouTube and I saw it at Camilla Crafts Design. Sorry, this is a little piece of a paper bag. Hopefully you can see that. Camilla Crafts Designs. And it may be something that you've already seen, I don't know. Um, she has quite a few subscribers, so. Sorry, I had to have a sip. Um, you know, you could have very well seen this before. I just have all these, and I have more. This is just a barely a drop in the bucket of these little um, paper bags. And I'm always trying to think of things to do. And I know like there's that one pocket that you cut this part off shorter and then it opens and closes and can be like a little bag on your page. I don't know. I've never tried those, but I'm like, I need to start doing something with all these darn bags. So um, I saw her do this this morning. I watched her video and was like, I just need to make some of those. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. So I'm sorry if you've seen this before, but you know, that's kind of how we do. We give each other ideas and um, then we play with them in our own way or whatever so that, um, you know, it gets passed along. So anyways, what it is, is this little paper bag and you cut off a portion and I'll, I'll go through the whole thing with you. Um, even though she does it over on her, um, YouTube channel as well. So you could go over there and watch it. But anyway, when you pull it open, if you don't glue it together, like I did right here, <laughs> then it has like three pockets. So two of them are nice and fat and then one of them is you know little so I thought these would be great both for journals because they fold up nice and flat depending on how uh, many things you stuck in there but if you just stuck like um some little tags and journaling card or something in there then it wouldn't get a whole lot thicker than that and then if you wanted these would be great happy meal for like valentine's day and you could put in some of those little flat chocolates you know the ones that are kind of more flat so anyways just a thought I thought they would be fabulous so um I did my first one kind of like she did hers she just put the brad in there and said you can tie it with a string so I just did it just by what she said I didn't um, see how she ended up doing hers and then I also did it with um, eyelets which I got too close together so you know that's always a live and learn thing when you're um, doing these but anyway you could do eyelets as a closure just put them in there right <laughs> <laughs> that's my advice do it right <laughs> and it'll turn out better and then you could like put maybe a gift card in there depending on the size of the bag this one might be a little bit small for a gift card but um it just all depends on the size of the little grocery bag that you use or lunch bag or whatever you want to call these so anyway I'm going to do a white one this time and then um actually no I'm going to do another one of these because I think I want to decorate it with my mushrooms so anyway what you do is on the back side you know where the the bottom of your bag is on the back side fold this piece you know kind of try to get it so you can get a hold of it and see it and then you're going to want to push that back and these are way wonky because they're little lunch bags so try to if you can get it a little bit straightened out this piece is going to get cut off so it's not like it matters if it's wonky it's just I want the rest of it not to be wonky if I can help it <laughs> so um and that's just the way these bags are you know because they're just meant for putting um lunches in or whatever they're not necessarily meant for this now the thing you need to be careful of and I'm worried that I'm doing it right now is don't cut that center part in there which is a little tricky, but if you kind of stay just above the line, you should be all right. So you don't want to cut that. Oh, like I did right there. Darn, darn, darn. So what we can do is nothing because that bag was so wonky. Look at how wonky. So it ended up cutting that part out. So I will use the top of that for, um, I'll show you. <laughs> we'll just fix it right now so that we don't have to worry about it going to waste. You can either fold this up and turn it into a little pocket, but I think what I'm gonna do, since it's already kind of a good height for a journal, I think I'll just glue the bottom closed and then I can just decorate it and put it in a journal. So apologize, don't, don't do what I just did, obviously is what I'm saying. I'll show you again and try to get it right. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little glue on the inside of these gussets just because you don't need it opening way up like that it's not necessary and then down along here too so 
so the bottom's all glued closed and then you know when you put it in your journal you could put a little trim or something along there to make it look better than that but then you have uh, just a little bag okay so let's try that again and not cut it this time hopefully I won't get as wonky of one as I got last time so we're gonna get this down out of the way hopefully okay so I want that flap to stick up above the other parts so I just folded kind of the sandwich bag back like that and this time I'll try not to cut the little part open it's hard when the bags are wonky right so let's see I'm going to pull this flap out and cut right along the line where that was folded so that I won't cut it open again and I'll do the same over here I can see better now so yeah that is just wanting to cut that <laughs> up a little bit higher and let's hope I didn't cut it open I did the of course the trial ones just fine without any dilemmas at all but you know when you do it on camera then you have to mess it all up so that gives everybody a good laugh um and then what you want to kind of do see how they're still like pushing on each other those two edges so you just kind of want to clean them up a little bit just by cutting off any extra bits that are hanging out just to even it up like that. and then I kind of on the other ones I came along here and this is tedious this part and fiddly but these are really super easy so it's kind of worth messing with this part just to get them cleaned up nice I mean if, if it doesn't bug you then don't worry about it but that kind of stuff makes me crazy so there you have it and you're slightly OCD. This is what happens to you. And it's always the silliest stuff. <laughs> See, but this is coming across here, and I don't really want that like that. So um, I don't want to cut too much though, because otherwise it's gonna come apart. Okay, so. Now what we have is our little top flap that then folds down. So you fold it down nice and nice and tight. Hopefully straight if you can. That's just cutting away that extra bulk and you just you don't need that flap right there. Okay? And then you bring your bottom part or the jaggedy edge of your bag up to almost right where that other uh Part was maybe just leave a little space so that this folds down easily and doesn't get all caught up on that. I mean, you could trim that if all else fails, but and then you're going to put glue along here. I'm sure you can already figure it out. And along here, and try not to get it on that other flap because then your bag won't open right. You know what I mean. I want to keep it on this side. And close that up. And again, these bags aren't perfect, so give yourself some, um, you know, don't be hard on yourself because they're they aren't perfect. Therefore, your little pocket may not be 100% perfect. And then just kind of make sure you have your little gusset opens. And then the back one as well, because there's two gussets with the that back part. That one I want closed. Not this very back edge though. Let's see, so you want to make sure you have your two gussets on this side that open, and the two gussets on this side. I mean, if you want them to glue closed, they just won't. It won't open as much as that. But I mean that doesn't really matter you don't have to have them open that much you'd still have the ability to slip something in there and then um if you want to put the i just don't like this right here <laughs> so 
so you can also clean it up afterwards. Just cut away anything that bugs you that isn't necessary. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> and then I'm going to glue this little flap down better. Okay, so what I did to put the brad in is um, I added a little piece of washi right in here. Uh, she didn't do that on her video at Camilla Crafts Design. Um, designs with an S, sorry. And I'll link it in the description box below with the video so that you can just hop over there and watch the video if you want to. But oh, this washi is almost gone, so it's going to be difficult. I just put a little piece of washi in there because I'm putting a brad in and I don't want the brad to rip the paper bag. But I mean, you could use anything. You could use another little piece of paper or um, masking tape or whatever. So I'm just putting it in here sort of centrally because that's where our little brad's going to go. And then you're just taking your craft blade. And this is a scalpel, I know. But anyway, and you're going to sort of, I liked, I wanted it a little bit lower. So I kind of, you kind of need to go high up at the top here if you want it a little bit lower. I didn't like necessarily where mine was before. And you're just cutting a tiny slit in there. I don't know if you can see. It's just an itty bitty slit. Just enough for the um, little prongs on the brads to go through. Then we're just going to pick any old brad. It doesn't really matter. I'll, how about yellow? Sure. These are old brads that I've had forever. But anyway, you're just going to find where the slit is on the outside. It's right there. And I'm just going to poke it through to the inside. Open up the prongs. And that's literally it. Then you have your little spot where your string can um, go around and tie down or if you want to do the eyelets I did the eyelets one here hopefully you put it down further because I put it up too high so it was too close to the flap but down a little bit further and then right in there and you can see that's not even centered right but you get the idea anyway and then you're just going to kind of glue this closed now because it doesn't need to be open anymore since um you're closing this up. It's it's just a flap. That's all it's only use. So I'm gonna put glue over here and over here. And we'll close it down and hopefully not glue our pockets closed. <laughs> okay. So see, it's like super simple, and you could make up a whole bunch of them. And then you can tie your string around, whatever you want. I just used some, maybe I'll use some black on this one, some black twine. This one's a little bit thicker, but it'll work. And I just went around the brad. Every time I say brad, I think of that commercial where she names her car brad. <laughs> Man, my brain, I'm telling you. And then um, I just tie it just so it's tied off. It doesn't really matter. It's really not going to go anywhere because it's tight, you know and then snip this extra bit off. You could add a little dot of glue, which is probably a good choice. Just to tuck that away. Oh, come on you, get in there. We don't wanna look at you. And then obviously you'll go around a couple times, whatever, go around that. I'm going to let that glue dry that's under there. Not that it's a lot, but I'll just cut it about there. Okay. So that's all. Or you can do whatever fancy closures you want. If you want to do the ones with the little paper, um, you know, circles and, or if you just want to do Velcro or whatever floats your boat really is what will work because it just needs to be closed. And if you're not putting a whole lot on there, then it doesn't need much you know so we're gonna just put a little decoration on the outside I feel like it doesn't need a whole lot since it's a brown bag right I don't want um, well I mean you might want to cover the whole thing but I just want to add a little something to it it depends on what you're going to use it for obviously if you're 
doing, like I said, for Valentine's Day or something. Um, I think the white bags would be super cute for that, or if you can find some red ones, or, you know, you may want to cover your bag a little bit more. And then if you're doing nature-y type journal stuff or grunge or um, a manly type thing, then you might want to just leave it more plain. It's all up to you. But there's, I think, loads of things you could do with these. They would definitely be super cute little Happy Mail. That's for sure. So let's put a little gesso on here because you know I can't leave it up alone. Gotta do it. I'm into this grungy kind of thing right now. I have my moments, you know, I do, I go through the phase of shabby chic and Victorian and <laughs> I don't know, I just kind of run all over the place. So it's whatever mood strikes me basically. But I'm really liking this kind of grungy look right now. I'm just gonna, and I know I'm getting it on the top flap, it doesn't matter. And you know, you could do all this before would probably be smarter, but I just wanted to show you how to do it before I did all that. I'm gonna open this before it sticks forever. I'll worry about the back and when this part dries. Okay. And I think I need more yellow, so I think I'll put a little bit of yellow on there. Just a little. And this is again my watercolor. And this is obviously a very odd way to do it, but <laughs> this is called lazy man's way of <laughs> watercoloring or doing something like this. I just want the color, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to come in and move it around. I don't really want, I'm not painting a picture, so I don't need to do some big fancy thing. I just want to get some of that color in there. Okay. And it ran and I'm fine with it. Okay. I'm going to get this dry and then I will be right back. Okay. I am back. So, um, I, while it was drying, starting to dry, I thought, Hey, I really kind of want, um, not quite so yellow. Right. So I sprayed some, coffee on there and then that sort of helped with the you know bringing the yellow down a little bit because it's a watercolor so obviously once you spray the coffee on it starts to kind of go away <laughs> that makes sense it's not 100% dry but we'll get oops sorry. that's a mushroom not a ink pad so get a little more ink on this part I'll worry about the back later. I just want to get this part done. And then I have some collage from my Marguerite Miller uh, collage challenge that I added that gold to. And I like that. So I think I'll put that on here somehow, maybe. I also have that little cluster right there that I might use. It's just, you know, so uh, paper and fabric and strings and whatever, whatever I grabbed. And then I want to add a little mushroom, but I'm worried about height for a mushroom. So I might have to use like this little one because I want this to close, right? And we don't want to cover up the top of the mushroom. That would be sort of pointless, but I think that little one will work. I don't think any of my other ones will. They're too tall. So let me see if I can grab Maybe a frame. I have a million in here that were like <laughs> mess ups. <laughs> That's always the way when I do um, something for the first time is I'm um, cutting on the Glowforge. That is, I always have extras because there's always the things I mess up on. So yeah, I have a whole bunch. I like the big one or the small one? I 
and if they aren't in my shop I'm always cutting more like I, I know I say that all the time you guys are probably like yeah I got it but I always have new people so I like to you know let them know what's going on I don't want them to feel like you know it's all an inside joke or something <laughs> if you know what I mean <laughs> so anyway that's why I say things over and over and over again and then I have this tape measure ribbon that might be fun sitting over here. I'm starting to try to learn to just use stuff that's sitting around on my desk because sometimes it's really cool, especially for this kind of a uh, project. There are other projects, obviously, where that might not be the case, but um, I definitely like it for this kind of thing. So, because it makes it random, like people say, you know, how do you know what to put on or those kind of questions and it's like well a lot of times I don't and it's not planned that's for sure I mean there's times when I have an idea of what I'm gonna put down like you know I had this stuff gathered together but I never know exactly how it's gonna end up and so the grabbing the stuff off the desk is really good because it it makes it random you know when you aren't sure what you're gonna grab if that made any sense at all, I don't know. I moved this thing out of the way. I have it plugged in like behind my desk and then it comes up the back of the desk, but then it's kind of always in the way or it's caught up on something. I saw a post on Instagram that's so me. It was like something like I was cleaning up my craft room and then, you know, basically destroyed it again because... I started, I found stuff that I wanted to play with, and it's like, that is so true. Like, I can start to get it cleaned up, and then I get sidetracked by something I either find or come across or see, or even a lot of times just having my desk cleared off gets me going, and I just want to make something. <laughs> so it's just this never-ending thing, really, honestly. It just is a never-ending mess, really. I mean, I get it cleaned, and then... I destroy it within 15 minutes, so. I think it's the nature of the beast, honestly. I know there are people far better organized than I am, that's for sure. But um, I really just think we all get in that mess sometimes, and um, I just kind of feel like you can't stop, you can't get out of it, you can't, I don't know. <laughs> it's silly. That's going to go there. And you could stop there, you know, with this. You don't have to put any more stuff on. I just kind of wanted to. These little mushrooms are just the cutest. Let me hold this one. I'll go under here a little bit. I like that idea. Since, since that mushroom had its little foot lifted up, I might as well tuck it under there, right? His little tiny foot. I guess I can move this now so you guys might actually be able to see. It kind of gets um, hard to see when there's all the white paint and junk going on. I would think. Is that better? Hopefully. Except I wanted that bit up. I like that up out of there. And then the little red one. We want I don't know, I kind of am feeling like that's too thick. Maybe over here with just a little number in there. That's uh, that's uh thick. Does anybody have favorite numbers? I mean, I know we all say my favorite number is whatever, but um, yeah, I think I definitely like fives for some reason. I tend to gravitate towards five, I've noticed when I put it on stuff. I always thought it was seven. I like sevens too, but 
my name my weird outfit. <laughs> that has these questions. <laughs> That's very possible as well. <laughs> you guys are like, this chick is crazy. You wouldn't be wrong. A one. We could just put a one in there. Just like that. And I do like how that went crooked. So let's do it crooked. See what you started, Louisa? <laughs> just by doing those mushrooms, I've been on a total bender ever since then with this kind of stuff. I've been wanting to do a grungy journal, though, for quite some time. And the mushrooms just seem to fit in there very well. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Can you guys see any of that? I hope so. It's really hard for me to tell looking in the camera what you can see because I can see it, but it's not very, you know, clear. I just realized this light wasn't even on. That might help too. Would that help? Okay. All right. So there's that one. Um, I don't know if I would do the back, honestly, for a journal. And I think that's where this one's going for sure is in a journal. But see, then we come around here. We just do, if you don't get your bread too tight or get too much glue under it or whatever. And then you've got your little string hanging off. So I think that's what I would do because then I would glue it down on a page like that. Um, and then you could open it up. But you could also tuck it into a pocket if you wanted to. Um, I do feel like we need a little something up here. Let's see if we got Tim Holtz stuff that will work. I need to get more of his, uh, just, you know, the ephemera stuff. Could put one of Tracy's um, labels on. Sorry, I'm just going through all my little bags right here to see if I can find Tim Holtz, and I do. Well, looky there. Let's see if there's anything I don't. Maybe a butterfly. I don't know. Kind of over the butterfly thing, honestly. I mean, I do like them. It's not that I don't like them. I just I feel like everybody puts butterflies on, and so sometimes I just don't want to because, you know, I don't want to do the exact same thing because how boring, right? For people to watch. Yeah, there's a cool one on this side maybe. It says August. But you know, that's good for that look. I do like that. There's a real one in orange. Ah, there's a little kiddo and another one. Those need to go in the Tim Holtz other folder. See, this is how everything gets all screwy in St. Louis, so to speak. Yeah, I like those too. I think that looks good. The colors are good. I like it. This is a Tim Holtz one. That's a real stamp. behind there. Oh, that was the dark side. Hello. Oh, well. That, uh, Tissue is now probably sticky enough for anything, but I just want to make sure because it's lumpy under there. Lumpy bumpy. Okay. 
Okay. Like it. And now we'll spatter it. And I got all of one done. <laughs> I could decorate the other ones. That might be a good idea. And if you guys need to see that again, of course, you can rewind. Or you can pop over to Camilla Craft, Craft Designs words and check hers out because she did a lovely lovely job she said she saw it on instagram i don't know who the original person was but anyways if i did i would gladly give them kudos That's my little block from the Our Great Miller Challenge. <laughs> I think I'm going to undo this and put it as much as possible to the back so that hopefully I don't get, I'll get spatters on it, but hopefully not all over it. I like this brush for the black ink because it just does little tiny spatters. And that's Windsor and Newton black Indian ink. And I do think I want gold, even though it's got quite a bit of gold. I just like the gold. That's all. The biggest thing, like I always say with this, but if you're new, is to mix the gold because it settles on the bottom. Okay, I think that's good. And then we're going to paint this off on something like I always do because I just like that, you know, I ended up using it, so... Okay, let that dry, get this out of the way. And we'll decorate one more. Definitely like that, so. There it is. All right, I'm just gonna set it up over here to let it dry. And then this one, no idea what we'll do, but let's just wing it. Okay, I think I do want to do the white one, so sorry. I know I said I was going to decorate one of the other ones, but I'm like, the one I would want to use to do this is the one that um, is, all right, um, has the red eyelets that I didn't get even when I put them in, so. This one seems like it's a little bit in better condition as far as that whole thing because you don't want to cut that inside part of the bag. So now we're just going to clean it up a little bit. This one was easier to cut. And these, uh, these ones I actually got from a friend. She sent them to me. Thank you, Michelle. But um, I know you can get little bags at Walmart. In fact, that one bag of them that I have is from Walmart. I don't know if they have these white ones. But like I said, you want to even this or, you know, like cut off extra stuff just because you don't want it running into itself. 
when you try to close it because that's no fun. So just clean it up. Hopefully don't chop anything you're not supposed to chop. <laughs> like I did. I'm just giving you a good example, right? <laughs> of what not to do. <laughs> we'll go with that. And there may be an easier way to do this. And if you know what it is, then more power to you. Because <laughs> I always have to struggle and make it difficult. <laughs> Okay, now I got that all dirty because this thing's dirty. We're just going to fold the bottom up, or the, it's actually the top of the bag, not the bottom of the bag. The top of the bag where it opens. Fold that up. Ah, this thing. Got gesso and all kinds of stuff on it. So maybe white bags aren't my, aren't my bag, huh? Okay. All right, I'm sure it'll get spattered or something anyways. I don't have any um, Valentine's stuff out at the moment, which I need to do, but I'm not doing real good in that department. So I'm just going to kind of make something out of this leftover piece of collage. That's probably already too big. And this is obviously a very primitive style heart. Because <laughs> I wanted those numbers in there, right? So I gotta like make it all wonky. There we go. It's heart-ish shaped. <laughs> okay, let's get these sides glued down. This bag's thicker, so I don't know. Maybe better to use a thinner bag. Eh. I think I'll use eyelets on this one, see if I can get them in there the right way this time found my eyelet um, setter finally. It was put away nicely right where you would imagine, but you think I could find it the first time? No. Okay, let's see, did we get everything glued? There's still these bits right here that I don't like. See how they're fo rolling, folding, rolling, whatever. Yeah, this bag's a lot thicker, so it's kind of tricky. This one's not as bad. Okay, there's my one pocket two pockets. This one's a little bit tighter. And then three pockets. And then, like I said, I'm going to do the eyelet, so I don't need to do that. Is this? This is going to be way huge, huh? I'm not going to be able to keep those numbers <laughs> for my weird looking heart here. I'm just going to massacre it till there's nothing left. And I know, if you fold the paper in half, you can get them the same size. <laughs> or you can just do it all wonky like I do. <laughs> okay. There's that part. Now let's do our eyelids. This was also a gift. Thank you so much 
to fern. Look at this. Okay. So we're gonna put one here. Try to get it centered. As best I can anyways. Not a red eyelet. Oops, I always do that backwards. Eh. Are you guys yelling at me? Oh man, my thumbs are ridiculous that that is that hard. Oh, you know what? I somehow grabbed. How did I do that? I don't want it up that high though. I want it like down, way down here. Not sure how I got that in the mix, but I did. Ay, ay, ay. It's always something, right? Let's go this direction. I think this is why I did it not very low, because it only goes in this deep. That's kind of a bummer. So then see, I'm going to have that same problem again. Darn! I should have used my other setter, I guess. I mean, these are totally way easier, but for that kind of a project, I think you need, yeah, see. Well, that's a bummer. You need to be able to go way down more. Okay. Let's put down something. Yes, I said something. <laughs> Just looking through my little scrap mess over here. Ooh, you know, it might be cool with some of that. That is off of my package from Amy, the um, artisan crafter Amy. Look at, there's a rose right there. She put these... Um, old music papers on the envelope and then um, I tried to tear off the tape and then all this like extra stuff was left and so I pulled some of it off because it just feels really cool and it's kind of neat how it's faded out or sort of there but not there. You know what I mean? We're going to take a red watercolor there. Reactivate it. That's the cool part about watercolor. When you squeeze it out of those tubes, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Um, uh, it dries like regular watercolor would dry in a um, in a pan, and then you can just use it again like regular watercolor. Which is the same with gouache. Gouache you can reactivate too. And I have discovered that gesso kind of does it too. Which I know like some things do and some don't. I don't know why I do that all the time. Because it really is not good because then it seeps through to the other side of the book page. I just want more water on here so I can... taking away some of the color there in the middle. So that just, you know, took away a little color. Do I want green too? I don't know. Maybe. Let's do a little bit of this on here.
I'm going to have to probably cover that little hole up. not even sure how I did that. Give it a little texture. Okay. Just needed something. That white was kind of killing me. I think I do want to use a little bit of green on there too. Sub green, light green. I want a darker one. I'm just barely putting any on there. I don't know if I'll end up using this. It may be hideous by the time it's done. I don't know. But if you don't play, you'll never try anything new. You'll never do anything new. So. This is called Lazy Man's Watercolor. Because <laughs> I'm too lazy to do it the right way. Maybe I would not recommend. I'm not gonna color in every inch of it. Because I kind of want it to look faded like the whole thing there. See how saturated these colors are? I love them in the tubes. They're just so much better colored. Yep, yep. Like it. Okay, so that would go on there. That'll go on top of it, but it needs like maybe a little fabric or something. needs to be inked. Oopsie. <laughs> it's the only thing with doing collages. Sometimes when you cut them, they fall apart. If you don't get them glued all the way, which a lot of times I don't, clearly. Sometimes with 
ripping lace is very hard to do. I like it when it's ripped though. Put a few little chocolates in there. Wouldn't that be just a fun little something to have? Or a little gift card or... One time, one of the funnest things I ever got, and I've mentioned it before, and I don't know if my sister remembers, but um, she uh, moved out when I was still pretty young because she got married when I was, I think, nine or ten. And, um, so she would send me things for, like, Valentine's Day or whatever. And, uh, she sent me a balloon, a heart-shaped balloon in a Valentine card one year. And I don't know, I just, that has stuck with me forever. I just thought that was kind of the neatest little something. You know what I mean? Like, that just goes to show that you, like, with grandkids or whatever, it doesn't have to be anything major, or, you know, you don't have to do the major stuff all the time. It can be something as simple as a heart-shaped balloon and um, a card. And I just remember that, and I just thought that was so fun. I just ripped off all that string. So, yeah, just a little food for thought there. So thank you, Megan. <laughs> She's the best. Best sister ever. We had our moments, of course, growing up because, I, like I said, I'm, I'm quite a bit younger than she is. And like when she was a teenager, I was always underfoot driving her nuts. So, but now we're like the best of friends. Thankfully, right? Because a lot of people aren't always best of friends with their siblings, unfortunately. So I think it's fun that we've gotten close and stayed close. Well, that was a little bit of a fail. This needs to come down here more. I'm not as worried about the part of the heart being covered, but I didn't want the whole rose part to be covered. Okay, and then I'm bummed because that didn't come out right as far as where it got placed. I guess if you lined them up, you could just, you know, put them together that way. But anyways, I don't know what to put on there. What else? What does this say? Oh, paid on note. That kind of goes good. If I had more Valentiny things, that would be probably more fun for you guys, but I just don't have anything out at the moment. Let's see. Let's use a little bit of this. I gotta go grab another little sponge. I'll be right back. Oh no, I put them over here, didn't I? They're right next to me in that drawer. I put them over here so I wouldn't have to go get them all the time. in the paint again I'll use this this is the candied apple I think it's called candied apple yeah but yeah fill it up with some goodies gift card little note that's fun
righty, let's do a little bit of spattering and we'll call that one done. I'm gonna use the black, even though it's Valentine's. It kind of just looks good together, I think, that black and red. But if that's not your cup of tea, of course you can do whatever you like. it just kind of brings it to life you know especially since I didn't really have any stuff out to do this <laughs> valentine thing <laughs> need to get on that my daughter's birthday is coming too her birthday is um February 16th and I need to get get her straightened out too because she's my sweet girl That's good. I don't think I'm going to do gold on that one. I could do silver. Silver would be kind of fun. But anyway, I don't know. I think I like it the way it is. So I'm not going to close it, but you guys saw that. But this is the one I really like. I really think that's fun. Because I had all the stuff ready to go, so that made it much easier. Those are so fun. What a great idea. Thank you, thank you to Camilla Craft Designs for sharing it because it is a great little pocket and thank you to whoever came up with it in the first place not my idea all right guys i hope you have a wonderful thursday and we will chat again soon love you bye